What issues were discussed at your session, please? Well, we had a session today on, um, it was sponsored by the Slavic Orthodoxy Group, and it was a session on uh, post-Soviet Orthodoxy, I would say, or post-communist Orthodoxy, post-atheist Orthodoxy, however you want to, um, however you want to formulate that question. Officially, it was called the Slavic Experience of Totalitarianism and Persecution. And we had three papers that dealt with that topic. One was by Reverend Dr. Pantelemin Iosif um, Pavlin, uh, Pavlinchuk. The second was by Mr. Nevin Vukic, and the third by Dr. Katya Tolstaya. And each paper spoke of a different aspect of this topic. One had to do with um, monasticism and the Soviet experience. The other had to do with, uh, in particular, with Justin Popovich uh, and Yugoslavian communism. And Dr. Katya Tolstaya spoke about um, theology after Gulag, uh, namely the orthodox understanding of the human person uh, the patristic orthodox understanding of the human person in light of radical dehumanization. Uh, so those were the topics and the questions, we had numerous questions, um, uh, and it was a very lively discussion afterwards. Unfortunately, we also had a, f uh, well, fortunately, but uh, unfortunately, our, we, unfortunately <laughs> also, we had a fourth speaker in this session who was a brilliant speaker, uh, Basil Luria from, um, uh, Russia, but he spoke on a topic that was supposed to be covered in the afternoon session where other speakers were unable to attend. So we okay. were, we, uh, fit him in here and his topic was, um, his topic was a missing link between Byzantium and Bulgaria, Syrian and Armenian Christianity in Northern Macedonia from the mid, uh, eighth to the mid 19th centuries. Why is the discussion of these issues, uh, important today? Well, in term, both of them uh, are important in the sense that um, the Slavic Orthodoxy group approached our uh, sessions uh, in light of contemporary Orthodoxy. So one session had to do on Slavic Orthodoxy, uh, the relationship between Constantinople and the Slavic Orthodox world. That was where Basil Yuria's paper was supposed to fit, and, and we wanted to shine um, historical, the relation, the historical relationship between Constantinople and the Slavic world um, uh, in light of long, deep history, yes? So issues that had come, you know, centuries Century. past uh, in, various as in, in various geographic uh, regions of the Slavic world, whether it be, you know, Russia, Ukraine, Bulgaria, um, uh, Romania, whatever, um, but Romania's not. Uh, in any case, um, so that's what we would with that panel, and Basil Ludia had an interesting uh, take on that. And then the other panel, of course, the post-Soviet experience is one that we are all Orthodox Christians are, whether they live through that experience or not, are ones that have to confront because, um, as we know, Orthodox Christianity was very much influenced by uh, the Soviet experiment. Uh, and the communist atheist um, education and so forth and so on. And so um, we feel that orthodox relations in contemporary society among the churches can't really be um, um, understood and communication can't be well established unless that Soviet experience is understood. As a network of scholars, how can IOTA help ad advance this discussion into the future? Well, I think that uh, having periodic IOTA conferences such as this one helps, but I also think that uh, the groups of scholars that meet at IOTA, that uh, IOTA gives the opportunity for scholars to meet and to form subgroups that will meet between IOTA sessions, let's say IOTA meets every four years. Meanwhile, groups can be doing and working on their subtopics. For example, there is an ongoing project which uh, Dr. Katya Tolstaya runs, for example, from uh, um, um, on theology after Gulag. Uh, and there's other scholars working on this topic. Uh, and that is something that will be pursued, dis, you know, in between IOTA sessions as well. So uh, I think these, that IOTA is uh, foundational in um, promoting the 
relations and, and getting scholars getting to know what everyone is working on. So we're not all working in isolation because Orthodox scholars in the academy, at least in America, and I'm assuming in Europe as well, especially those of us who work in secular institutions, not in theological academies, right? We don't know each other. We tend to be um, very much separated in our own worlds and IOTA helps to bring us together uh, and connect us with those working in theological academies as well, because I'm not sure those who study and teach in theological academies knows what's happening um, with secular scholars. Uh, not secular scholars, but those of us orthodox work scholars who work in secular universities, which is very important, because most of us were trained in theological academies anyway. <laughs> so. Thank you very much. You're welcome.